talking about he was like yeah everyone gets up on stage and they get all angry and they act like being angry is this big huge cool thing to do he's like being angry is hard and the angry is not hard you're going to pick up your kid from soccer practice yeah. that's <laughs> hard that's great i love yeah. that Hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and Father and Cyprian. You guys go to a restaurant, and you guys order hash browns. Are you secretly hoping for the little shredded up potatoes, or are you looking for patties? Oh, shredded up potatoes. I'm a patty man myself. Wow. Oh, somehow yeah. we make it work. Although, Cyprian, when we, when we were uh, visiting you, yeah, remember we had breakfast that what at yep. that one place? We got hash Early. browns there. They were shredded up. They were patties. They were shredded. Yeah, they were shredded. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. They indoctrinated you, my friend. So you know what I really like is a, and I I'm trying to think of where I got this, where I've had this. Maybe it's at Hash House. I'm trying to think of where this is, but it's like I think I feel like I've had it a few different places. Instead of hash browns, what they have is, or maybe I've had it like, so sh it'll be shredded. The shredded hash browns are kind of on top, but then they'll have like mashed potatoes with Ooh. cheddar in it Ooh. that they've like sort of flipped over and over. So it's, the, but it still has the mashed potato-y aspect to it. And then it's on top of it. And it's just like, stop. That's what I'm really hoping to get. But I, I'm trying to think of where the, somewhere in Vegas, one of these breakfast restaurants in Vegas, that was their hash browns. And I was like, I'm sold on this. Yeah. So good. I mean, forgive me. The, the big thing for me. Um, there's something about like taking the fork and breaking, mm -hmm. breaking it up. You know what I mean? There's something about that for me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, like the I, I would say this. There's more times that I have taken a bite of a hash brown in the middle is cold when it's the the shredded stuff. You know, I'd, what I mean? I'd agree with that. The patties are generally done better. Mm -hmm. I I well, could I yes. could go either way. I could really go either way. It doesn't really. Yeah, matter. I, I'm with you. I could go either way because hash browns, tater tots, any type of fried crispy potato is tots. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in with tots. I mean, I feel like if you do the shredded. I will always ask for well done hash browns. I will oh, okay. always ask for my hash browns well done. See, I'm more of a medium rare shredded. guy. That's but, like but, a, the last thing you want is a medium rare potato. That's yeah, like the worst yeah, thing I'm, I'm, ever. I'm, 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 I'm the crunch. You guys don't want a little bit of crunch in there? Well, the thing is, a raw potato just does not taste good. It really doesn't. No. But a cooked potato, cooked pretty much any way you want to cook that potato, I'm in. I know. I'm very, very in, which is very weird that, that the raw aspect of it, there are very few vegetables that I can think of. I guess it's a tuber, right? It's like, a, it's not even a vegetable. It's like a root. So maybe that's the case with roots. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't taste good raw. No, I would agree with that. I'd agree with that completely. I, I mean, I go either way. And then are you guys a ketchup? What, what do you put on them? Is it ketchup yeah, every absolutely. time? Yep. Ketchup yep. every time. I will say this before. This is nine fifty seven. Is Heinz you don't like Heinz 57? I said, unless there's Heinz 57. Oh, unless there's Heinz 57. Yeah, I haven't had Heinz 57 in like, I don't know, 15 years. So I'm, I'm hankered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the difference, Father? It's got some spice to it. It's got a little mm -hmm. bit of it. Yeah. You know what? I've actually, and this is just turning into three old men talking, but this is fine. <laughs> I've actually gotten more and more into cocktail sauce recently. Like mm -hmm. I've been really digging dipping stuff in cocktail sauce. I can't help it. It's like just like a little bit like it's a, like a little like horseradish ketchup. I think it's yummy. Mm. I love me some horseradish. I absolutely for me that's a sh that's shrimp only. 
cocktail sauce, shrimp, like shrimp only. I'm not putting it on anything else. I don't just like shrimp. shrimp. I don't like shrimp. Shrimp is you don't okay. like shrimp, but you like cocktail sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I don't it's even know. It's funny because <laughs> out of all the stuff, out of all the tomfoolery, I've never seen Cyprian actually be like, I'm done with you. Like, like that right there. He was like, that's, that's I don't understand fair. it. I don't understand. I'm done that. with you. You like cocktail sauce, but not shrimp. We're like the bugs. Like the <laughs> like, they're like sea insects. I'm not in. They are. Yeah. yeah. They are. Yeah. They're that's so good, good though. They're so. I good. worked at a seafood restaurant, and I had to clean the mud veins out of Ooh, shrimp. Yeah, and that won't. Pretty much from then on out, I would dare you to clean mud veins out of a shrimp. Uh, for you know two hours and ever think about popping one of those bad boys in your mouth again now that being said mm. you give me some classic like southern midwestern straight from walmart frozen popcorn shrimp i'll get down on that i'll because okay. that's not even shrimp anymore that's yeah. like the leader that's like the fish leavings they found on the factory floor what about crawfish you know that's your okay about crawfish that's so interesting i have never had crawfish Oh, so the good. other day it rained really hard and we were my family and I were out at a park and we saw a crawfish just like yeah. crawling along on the ground. I've never seen a Missouri crawfish before, just like on like some pavement near a park. And I was just like, mm-hmm. what's up, buddy? I'm not gonna try and get you to some water because you will pinch me and I'm not gonna do yep. that. I'm not gonna mud bug. Me. It's a mud bug. Yeah. So um yeah, I think that's all the mileage you're gonna get out of that. So <laughs> anyway. Uh, there was not that many questions, so I think we're just going to get back to the creed, which is good because this is one I've kind of been waiting for um, mm-hmm. for a couple of different reasons. I have some questions about the next stanza. Is that right? Next line, next couple lines. And I'll, we'll see how far we get because, you know, um, but obviously some of this can lean into. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so. Uh, so we are now at the point where that okay so father correct me at any point please because i don't know very much about this but this is where the original creed ended correct whose kingdom shall have no end yeah yeah and we start picking up in the holy spirit Mm -hmm. yeah no i mean yes but this that they added this in later on like this was not first ecumenical council stuff right this was like yeah well especially the um, or are you speaking specifically about his kingdom shall have no end no, kingdom shall have no end full stop that's mm-hmm. how it was for a couple hundred years right that was the nicene creed well the kingdom shall have no end part was added in to deal with the kiliasts um people mm-hmm. who um and we have we have neo kiliasts even today um and that's the christ is coming back to make a physical kingdom right. mm-hmm. okay all right so a physical kingdom, maybe we could deal with the Kiliasm thing. So this is the idea that... Christ oh, contrary. Is to... oh, contrary. What, what is that? I oh, think contrary. we actually already have dealt with it. Have we? Yeah, have we? we did an episode on neo Kiliasm. I'm on with, because huh, I did not know that. I did not know about neo Kiliasm until this was I he Was this one that I missed? No, uh, you were oh, here. Probably. Uh, yeah, you were here. It's okay. I, must, I don't remember I which one it is. Out. I mean, we could touch on it real quick, but essentially... For those who might miss it, whatever it's, um, there's a there's a teaching which is popular, very popular uh, now again, um, not now and again, but now you know, comma again, um, and I mean, really, a, a predominant amount of evangelicals hold it actually, unfortunately, um, and it gets tied into the whole thing with the state of Israel, but that Christ is going to come again and establish um, his, his throne, his kingdom uh, in uh, the historical Jerusalem as we understand it now, you know, um, and then he'll reign there for a thousand years and the Satan will be released again. And then there's going to be another coming. And so this is a heresy that was, um, you know, running around in the early centuries and, and the church put it down, specifically adding this into the creed to address it, but it, it's, it's, it's popped up again, so. As they often do. Yeah, but I mean, even even more than just kind of like the, um, the kind of the, manil- the millenarial, <laughs> the millenarialism. 
Wow. And the dispensationalists, there's a spiritual kind of chiliasm. There's like a neo chiliasm that, that's come up in regards of um, people, I think, promoting like a utopianism. I think, I think it's very much in that same spirit, you know? So I think I am really sorry. I think we talked about this in your catechumen class, Father. I don't think this is on the podcast. Me? I apologize. I apologize. So that's that's what that's what it is anyway. Yeah. So yeah. well now um, we got it. Now, now we got it. it. Yeah. yeah. So um which I'll just say one last thing since please for establishing that. It's really important too because this gets to I mean, this portion of the creed really speaks to our project here in the Royal Path in regard to the, you know, that we brought this up before for sure, but the kind of Hegelian dialectic of, mm. of the the two sides kind of opposing each other to present a, um, a singular result. I guess that's one way of putting it, you know? And um, this is real important because the, the cult of politics definitely is in that spirit, you know, the neo kiliast spirit for sure, you know? Um, anyways, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Yeah. So. No, I mean, because that's, I mean, that's one of the whole things of like, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch too much on that, but like creating utopia on earth. I mean, Dr. Manhattan, Dr. Manhattan said the best, they want to build a heaven, but their heaven is filled with horrors. So yeah. yeah. Um, anyway. Which is, that's transhumanism right there. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. transhumanism right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we're, we're going to build it. We're going to build a heaven where we're going to upload everybody's upload quote unquote everybody's consciousness into the cloud but that basically means you're going to kill everybody yeah can i right? say this because really you can't quick. upload consciousness into the cloud that's i mean i don't this is crazy no we yeah we absolutely uh father isn't it weird i would just say this really quick and perhaps i'm reading too much into this isn't it awful weird that all this abortion stuff is coming up and this is totally out of left field all this abortion stuff is coming up around the time of prophet jeremiah's names day not weird at all yeah okay so i was like because prophet jeremiah has been coming up a lot and my favorite prophet i'm really into prophet jeremiah i think that dude's pretty rad um but that all that stuff is seeming to coming ahead like because i think he's in like a week or something like that i think like his, uh, we commemorate him in like a week and father would you call a prophet from the old testament a saint uh well they're in their class of their own although they are saints um but that we you know we the holy prophets you know um it's like the order of angels like you have yeah, I mean, it, you got it, prophets it, yeah and angels are members of the church just like the prophets are right but sure. um they have they're in their own class let's say word and I'm, i've noticed that there's some prayers where you can ask the prophets for to intercede as well which i was like oh this is i so i had that question as well andrew about yeah and then prophets and saints and are they saints we'll touch on yeah, this really quick and then we'll get onto the thing the creed but uh it's interesting because i asked father a while ago because i was asking for specific help with a specific thing i was like hey father would it be okay if i got a blessing to pray to blessed seraphim rose who is not yet canonized a saint and father was like he said it's become really weird recently that uh we feel like we can only pray to saints and we can't just pray for people who are dead in general like pray to dead people who are dead in general like past orthodox christians and stuff like that so like a lady from my parish who passed away i could ask her to pray for me like even if she's not commemorated right father am i remembering this exchange correctly uh, it's a little mixed up but yeah like essentially um the context is like hey you can pray you know you can pray to blessed sarah for me it's offering public prayer you know like formal prayer versus your private devotion are two separate things all right so okay. um you know for for us it, it's the same thing in regards of you know there's this there's a there's a divide between the way the um the roman catholic the latin church you know the be the beatification process and, and and everything in there whereas for us it's the ground up it's not it's not top down it's ground up oh so okay. you'll find that people will have um like a, 
so Saints Saint Sophroni. We've like those of us who venerate him, we've known he's a saint for long before he was formally canonized and been and been praying to him, you know. Um, saint Joseph the Hesychast, known he's a saint, people are praying to him. Some saints, you know, they'll have people will secretly have akathis and things that will get circulated. Um, and people begin to pray it. You're, you know, it's it's not it's not formal. It's very um, kind of grassroots. And then eventually, um, there comes enough of like a critical mass, I guess, if you will, that you know, the 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 formal institution of the church, you know, recognizes it. That's how we usually do. Hey, Father, we're Orthodox. It's it's critical liturgy, not critical. Mass. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> about that. Sorry, I'm drinking that, real strong There's, tea there's right now. something so right about that. Like yeah. what that that as opposed to the idea of like, okay, here we have this special council of people over here. Like, let's just here's all the candidate names. Like I'm talking like from the Latin side, here's all the candidate names. Let's go through participating only up here, like at 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 the top of the clergy, and we're gonna do all this, and then we'll tell you who the saints are, as opposed to who how is the Holy Spirit working? Right. in the church itself like because the, the holy spirit's deciding who's a saint and who's not a saint correct you know it's it's like th there's just something so right about about that like i guess i had an inkling that that must be how the process is i hadn't heard anybody really talk about it like, like more formalized like you said it father but it's like yeah of course yeah there's just something right again these things keep popping up for me it's it's sort of like the deeper that the deeper that I dig or the more that I am catechized, it's really my catechism, right? Mm -hmm. It's like every step of me being catechized, the thing that keeps coming up for me is like, that's just right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's what just it right. is, I mean, forgive me, but you begin to, you kind of realize, oh, I, I'm moving um, in further and through the organization and and finding myself increasingly within the organism mm -hmm. right that's that i mean that's probably i think that probably sums up that experience and it's also one of the things that um forgive me for being self-aware tonight but I, I would also hope that people are really getting out of our project is um Notice I said moving in and through, not around or past, because it's like, it's part of it, right? The organization is part of the organism, but it, it's it's moving through it into the the reality of the, the organism, the living aspect of, of the church, because this is the thing where I think so many people are starved for. You know, people will approach the organization of the church, they'll have the formal structures, they'll have the formal etiquette, They'll have the forms, but what they're really wanting is the the, the living, breathing meat of, of the church, you know, the living, breathing, um, the life. You know? Yeah, it's squishy in there. I can say that. Like once you get in, it's kind of squishy in the middle, like not not that I'm anywhere near the middle, but it's like, oh, wait, this is a lot more. Like there's a little bit more give here than I thought there was going to be. It meets, some people don't like that give, actually. You know, really? some people. Oh yeah, some people find it really uncomfortable. And um, you know, I was talking with someone last year, I think it was, but I was explaining to him about um, you know people find themselves being stagnant. And I was fresh from visiting my confessor, and I had this great time going to see him, and you know, swimming. He lives on this island, whatever. And um, it was fresh in my mind about, you know, the shore of this island, it was like the, the, the water's warm and, you know, you can kind of like, your feet are there, your, your feet can touch the ground of the shore and it's safe and the kids are there. And, you know, there's this kind of like buoy line or whatever, like a dock. And then like, okay, just, you know, kind of be careful because once you go here, it's, you know, it's the boats and, you know, it's the deep water. and um getting out there it's like you know there's nothing to touch right and and the water it's the cold deep water right but that's where the action is <laughs> you know what i mean and 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 so a lot of people they just it's it's fine you know what i mean it's fine it's like i spent a lot of time which i loved you know coaxing my daughter and my son come on like let's go a little bit deeper 
I mean, that's, I think that's what the saints are always trying to do. That's the Holy Spirit's definitely doing in our life is trying to get us into that cold, deep water. Cause we just want to be in the shallow and like, you know, our feet are getting cut up and like, that's okay. Cause it's still safe. You know I mean? It's some people prefer to stay there and, and you'll find that a lot of, like I, I find that for some people they hit this kind of mark and there's like the hump people hit. I call it the two-year hump mm. where the, you know, the honeymoon's over and the exotic newness of the of the liturgy and all the foreignness all that begins to wear off and people are like oh this is work you know and people begin to to bounce for a little while this is where you start seeing people disappear for a couple months or sometimes a couple years unfortunately and then they kind of come back whatever um i mean i did yeah so there there's like there's that phenomena but there's another phenomena where people um they they just become very uncomfortable with how squishy it is meaning it isn't rigid like there there isn't a system in regards of i got this mm. that's the first thing you really learn is like i i don't got this like and hopefully when you hit that spot you realize oh this is why i actually need christ oh this is why i actually need the saints and and our lady and oh i do need the rigor i i do need the traditions of the church like because without them it's just i can't get any bearings you know but for some people they would rather um find something that's much more easier to for them to handle or i dare say master Um, saint sifroni says like right i think the man of the hidden heart um uh said that when the thought occurs to you oh this is the way like, oh, this is this is what I do every day, you know, like, oh, OK, yeah, I know what to do now. That's like a demonic thought. That's a thought of like, oh, all I have to do is say these 150 Jesus prayers. All I have to do is say these prayers and all that stuff helps, of course, but it's navigating your way through that stuff. So, it's tough. so in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life who proceeds from the father with the father and the son together is worshiped and glorified who spake by the prophets. So the first thing I wanted to touch on is, I'm sorry, guys, I'm getting this podcast back on track, but the first thing I wanted to touch on uh, was the um, personhood of the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. because I think that that's something that we've touched on a little bit. I know it's something that Father has talked about, about that the Holy Spirit's not a force. It's not like an energy you can command or something. Yeah. So he's a person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. Forgive me if it's been said here before or people, you know, kind of know this, but I'm, I'm really keen on this because, yeah, if you know me, you know, I love Star Wars. I, I love Star Wars, but, you know, truth be told, people's mm-hmm. theology is informed more by Star Wars than it is the, the fathers or the councils, unfortunately, you know, so, and I'm talking Orthodox people, you know, like there's a lot of people who they're, they're exp- well, not their experience their perception and their understanding of the Holy Spirit has more to do with the force of Star Wars than it is the, like, you know, God, which is the Holy Spirit, you know? Um, so I, that's really important because I, one of the problems that people will begin to have is that because they don't understand that the Holy Spirit, number one, is God, number two, you know, is, is a person, number two, three um that the holy spirit one the holy spirit there's 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 particular um there's particular aspects in which you know we we experience the holy spirit which are distinct from the father and from the son um and one of them which is which is kind of scary for people is that um the holy spirit is incredibly gentle and I don't mean just gentle as in like, hey, it's okay. I understand, you know, you'll get through this. I don't mean gentle like that. I mean, I mean gentle in the sense of um, you don't want to grieve the spirit. Like you, you'd be surprised um, that you can actually grieve the Holy Spirit. St. Seraphim of Sarav talks about this, you know, 
quite a bit and other saints will talk about it too but 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 that's a thing and for and so for a lot of people especially if you're coming from like a uh, evangelical kind of background that can feel almost scandalous you know um but it's true and and you don't really know it until you've had an experience of the holy spirit in such a way where um i, I mean I think we, we might have talked about it before, but just for, for the sake of the context, you know, like the key, one of the key things about the evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life is the conviction of sin. Mm. And when you, I, I might have spoken about this before, but, you know, like your guardian angel will encourage you about something like, hey, you know, maybe you should just do a little bit more. Yeah, you know, let, let, like you can Put do it. Put down that more. slice of pizza. Put that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, you can, you know, you can do a couple more prayers, you know. Hey, you know what? Like, maybe a couple of prostrations, whatever. You know, that's the Shigari and Angel, you know. Holy Spirit's like, you know, when you did that to her, you said these words to her, you know, you 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 really, you know, blah, 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 like whatever. Or like, you know, um, convicting you of your sin and that kind of like ooh, you know the the kind of conviction that leads you to a, a like a real aware like a sobering awareness that's the holy spirit right and so um those of you who have had that experience you know how uh acute that sting is but also how sweet it is it's it's that weird right it's like ooh, that really stings but it's like it's so good because it's like wow i'm i'm, I'm actually seeing myself you know it's a that's really, such a weird feeling it's yeah. the weirdest feeling and it, it's, and it's a weird, weird but you know that that like i could when you said that it's like oh i know exactly what yeah. he's talking yep. about yep. yeah and, and i would just say to you this is one of those moments where it's like the natural man doesn't understand the, the things of the spirit so this this is this is one of the things of if you understand that you you've had you have this experience there's plenty of people who are like, they can understand it conceptually, but ex understanding it conceptually and experiencing it are, are two different things, right? And so once you've experienced that, then you also understand that it's difficult to hold on to that feeling. And once you get to a point where you're able to really um, become cognizant of the Holy Spirit in that way, you can try to hold to it but one of the quickest ways to make it you know to make him you know become imperceptible to you as as he was before is justification the second you begin to be like well it's like boom it's gone it's gone right that's what i mean by the gentleness that's why it's like you know the holy spirit came down in the form of a dove right it wasn't a dove right we iconographically we depict the holy spirit as a dove um and it's great I, I you know in the altar i have a big ah, it's great no problem with it but just to be clear and to be more concise and accurate the holy spirit came down at like, like a dove you know and, and like but it wasn't in the form like oh it was a dove it was like something like a dove and the reason for that is because you know a dove is pure a, a dove you know is also very gentle a dove is you know uh, um yeah it's gentle because i don't want to use the word skittish it's gentle right it's like it's it's maybe like sensitive or subtle sensitive, yeah to where subtle. like i'm feeling almost like the the picture that you're painting is almost one of like balance of how subtle balance is you're in a balance it, like you, you just fall off just the yep. littlest bit and it's gone yep. like completely gone yeah because know? because perfect balance like balance if something's balanced when you see something balanced, that is a manifestation of perfection. Does, does that make sense, right? Like something, yes. something in balance is manifesting the principle of perfection. You're, you're, you are witnessing and participating in perfection, right? So that perfection, and, and perfection is a manifestation of God, <laughs> All right? When you, when you experience... And I'm not saying perfection is God. I'm saying God is perfection. Right? Do you do you see the difference? Right? 
Mm-hmm. And so yes. just so we're clear, we're not getting into any kind of, you know, kind of pantheistic thing, but like experiencing something in balance, right? When you, whatever. I went down to the secret place in Missouri with the rocks balancing. I mean, I don't know if a place exists. I'm just trying to think like, think of some sort of natural. Oh, it exists. I'm <laughs> just think of some kind of natural. Uh, they exist, right? And like, and all kinds Absolutely of. Absolutely they do. Yeah. Balance rocks and people go there because they're like, wow, there's something awesome about that. Not like California awesome, but like, ooh, there's something I'm in awe of this, right? Well, why? Because it's 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 communicating something to us far deeper than just like that's pretty nifty how them rocks bounce. You know what I mean? It's communicating something to us deeper, and that's a great great point you bring up because that balance, right? It, that's that's one of the kind of um, the markers or the sense of of God. You know, you're like wow, that's Like that's what we're always striving for in a spiritual life. We want this balance, right? The royal path, forgive me. You know, again, not to be too self-aware, but like the royal path, what? what, How's another way to understand that balance? And it's an incredible amount of work. You know, it's it's toil. I remember going to, I mean, on the the note of balance, it's like you go to, you know, Cirque du Soleil or whatever in Las Vegas and they have these acts, usually they're Russian, right? And they'll usually be like, two guys or sometimes a man and a woman and they do these incredible balancing things one hand and then one's standing with one hand super strong and one is like doing a handstand with one hand or they'll do on top of each other's heads or whatever and like to get the stillness Mm -hmm. you see the incredible exertion of it like it's this exertion that's happening in this tiny little box but you realize that it's more than you could ever do Mm -hmm. And the amount of work that they had to do to stay in the stillness. And I just, it's, it's just coming to me that it's like, yeah, because I felt like you'll get, I could get glimpses of it in prayer. It's so much work to hold. So So much work to hold. So much work. (laughs) And forgive me, but this is one of those things too, where it's like, you be, I just want to encourage everyone, you know, have some humility. And, and when you endeavor in prayer and these things, you're not going to make it. That's okay. You know what I mean? But that's a good thing because when you reflect on that, that's actually going to help your piety and it's going to help your reverence for the things of God. And here's the thing for the saints, because when you recognize, <clears throat> when you recognize what it takes for them to keep that tension, then you're like, man, or, pray, yeah. for, pray for me, right? Oh, yeah. And and that's one of the that's one of the things that um, you know I don't want to you know forgive me I know I speak in absolute terms a lot of times but I <laughs> you know people who haven't eh, people who don't have that kind of um, reverence and I don't mean just the kind of superficial like oh the saints piety but I mean like that real like yeah. You know, that that kind of like, you know, wow, you're a bad dude. You know, like <laughs> when you don't have that, it, it's simply I, I look at that and go like, oh, it's fun. You just you haven't really tried yet. Because once you've tried and failed <laughs> and failed, that's where you start seeing reverence. I'll give you an example, you know, like um, for a lot of people, it, it's it's fine, whatever, but they'll still be like, well, I, I've, I've unfortunately, I've known some Orthodox people who have slipped and in, slipped into the kind of like fence walking sometimes like, well, you know, a lot of times cradles where it's like, you know, they're, they're raised in the church. And then for, for some, you know, whatever reason, uh, they unfortunately encounter usually some charismatics or something, not to sound too pejorative, you know, but just the fact is, is like, they'll encounter some charismatics usually and they'll be like oh like why do you pray to the saints and like that whole thing right well the problem is is that i understand where that it's completely wrong i understand where that sentiment comes from but the thing that really dispels it is okay if you think like that's not that's not necessary blah 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 you know you think that you're the holy spirit let's try this let's try for like 
not even one day. Let's try it for one hour to maintain prayer like St. Joseph the Hesychast did. Let, let's try just for one hour to maintain prayer like St. Sophroni did. Let's try for one, you, you see what I'm saying? You're not gonna be able, like, you're, like, you're not gonna be able to do it. And these people don't have that experience, right? So if you guys are following me, I may be totally off and I apologize, oh, but- I'm, I'm following you exactly where you're going. But getting back to kind of like what I was saying earlier, it's like, this is why you also see it coming from the ground up because the people know. You're like, the people know like why whatever saint's a champion. Because you're not like, not only, not only have we, do we bear witness to his miracles and all that, but like, you could do it. Like we need a champion. Like we need a champion and the saints are champions in that way. Yeah. Because they do, they, they do the impossible. They, just like when you're looking, well, not just like, but analogous to when you're seeing those people Cirque du Soleil doing these incredible bounce, it's like, whoa, whoa, right? It, it's, it's, it's very similar to that. And it's, it's important to recognize that because the hubris, um, it isn't simply just kind of like an embarrassing thing. It, it's actually very sad and, um, you know, I dare, you know, obviously dangerous, but so sad because, um, at the same time, it's not impossible. Because speaking about the prophets, you know, and this is what the you know Apostle James says. It's like speaking about Elijah. Elijah was a man just like us, tempted, right? Now, we don't denigrate him and say, like, oh, you know, just like these these people do, unfortunately, talking about Mary, like the mother of God, like, who's Mary? Like, whatever. It's like, Lord have mercy, like you have no idea. You know, you, you've all heard that before, right? Like yeah. people denigrate the mother of God like that. God, God forgive Mary me. worship. Yeah. yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is like, that's also why they're so awesome is because they are like us, right? Like, and it is possible for us to get there. But the thing is, do we have the love? Do we have the faithfulness? Yeah. Right? They, they're not given special powers. They, <laughs> they attain grace because of that love and that faithfulness. And that's... So I have a question, Father. Uh, really quick, uh, St. Basil the Great said, and this is St. Basil the freaking great, was right. like, I have never known a woman, but I am not a virgin. Like mm -hmm. he's saying like his thoughts were so powerful. He's right. like, and so I related with that <laughs> sentence. And I think that like, when I was obviously coming into the faith and I was still single, like I had a girlfriend, but I wasn't married yet. I was like, Oh, I could become a monk, you know, let's be a monk. And I'm like, I absolutely could not make it as a monk. Like now I, I know what it takes to be a lay person. And I know what Holy Week was like and having to go to Matins and having to go to the liturgies and having to go to the 3 a.m. liturgies that I'm sure that father spontaneously does sometimes that it's just like, I could not do that. It's just not something I could really do right now. Maybe if things were different, but it's like, I think that's the soberness that comes from just having gotten beat, gotten beat up, beating the crap out of like just a little bit. So anyway, um, I have heard it said, and I'm maybe mistaken, but I've heard it said that like saints, sometimes there's like, I don't want to get into like, like areas of like, um, oh, what's predestination like that. I'm not trying, but they were born with like extra grace like that there was just grace from present, like from the beginning, like in a way that maybe I didn't have. That doesn't mean that like they had superpowers right away, but like Papa Nicholas was clairvoyant when he was a child. Like he knew- Or St. Like, Matrona of Moscow. Mm -hmm. Like that, they, yeah. they said her, she was like from baby, things were yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. So, and I've heard it said that like this person- was but not all of them, but not all of them. Of course, of course not. And not I could have been given that grace and I ruined it. Like I could have been given, and they were given that grace and could have not engaged it, which might, I might have done. I right. might have that's, done. That's the key. I, I was telling the sisters months ago. I was like, you know, we we're talking about whatever, and we we're they've been going through this uh, book on Yurandisa, uh, Markella, and uh, excuse me, Karina, 
uh, and you're introducing Macrina. She's the spiritual daughter of um, St. Joseph the Hesychast. And um, <laughs> we were talking about how, you know, just this crazy stuff, like at one point in time, you know, before she was fully, um, before she was the, the introduced of the abbess there and just like she had walked all these miles with all this, with all this, like, I can't remember if it was wood or laundry on her back, just, just crazy, right? Just this incredible physical labor and says that like, she came in um, to, to the nunnery, dropped her, you know, whatever, like 40 pounds of laundry or like, you know, wood, whatever. And just like started to bang out like 300 prostrations and you know what I mean? Like, like people aren't, people aren't doing that with a full, full night's rest, no. let alone traveling for miles. Right. Like, no. So, but, but the question is, is like, how did she, like, how did she get that grace? Did she get that grace because she did the prostrations or was she able to like do the prostrations because she got the grace? Well, chicken or the egg, but I would say to you, right she engaged it like that i think that's the big key because i'm really leery of the narrative that gives some sort of like superstitious or like you know what i mean something that something that would negate the fact of people's engagement like say matron's good to her she could have very easily just fallen into self-pity and bitterness yeah, and resentment. i mean yeah that that's like like period period you know what i mean um and and here's the thing if you don't believe me right um think about all the saints who they say things like saint basil like i am not a virgin you know even though i've never known a woman think of all the saints who are like i haven't even begun to become you know humble i haven't even begun to repent they're glowing you know what i mean like they're working miracles it's like i haven't even so there's your proof. Yeah. There's your proof. And I would dare say this, just for an example, Yerandisa, you know, uh, she didn't do that to be like, I'm going to bang out all these prostrations. Watch this, right? I'm going to put all you other nuns in your place. That wasn't why she did it, right? That, that's another thing about it. They, the saints, they don't do these things in the, in the, in the same type of... Um, vainglorious way that we all do things they do things because they become they become so acutely aware of the love of god and their need for god right both and that they that they'll do anything for it and i would just dare say this i'll oh, shut up because i'm talking too much but we can all get there qualitatively you may not be able to, to emulate their works quantitatively in regards of the amount, right? But the quality of actually being honest and, and having a broken and contrite heart, which God will not despise, that's possible for any of us. And that's what God wants, right? God wants a broken and contrite heart. That you can have, but it's hard because guess what you gotta be? You gotta be humble, actually, not fake humble, not not doing fake bows and like oh forgive me but really just like humble and being willing to not justify yourself yeah because i mean so I, this go, go ahead andrew if you want uh yeah i've just been in that situation where i have literally felt i was at the crossroads of like the saint way and then my you know the me way and I almost always choose the me way. I mean, I'm just saying like, that's the difference. The difference is not like the amount of prostrations I'm doing. The difference is not like, I mean, it almost would be better from the way I've experienced things and father, please correct me. It would almost be better for me to not eat that fourth slice of pizza than to not tend to abstain from pizza altogether because I've not even given myself that choice. I come to that place, that intersection of being like, mm. you could, or a better example, I have $5 in my wallet, but I'm really counting on that $5 for like my lunch or whatever. I don't know. And I pull it next to a homeless person on the street or whatever. And they're asking for money. And I feel that conviction of being like, I could give this $5 away. Well, what about lunch? Lunch will take care of itself. Don't worry about it. You have a debit card, whatever. It doesn't matter. Mm. And then it's like, 
uh no and then i just keep driving and i don't get the money it's just like i've literally been at that intersection so many times and still just been like mm, no and like i think that for me speaks much more to like my what three prostrations i do a day you know like that speaks much more to like the amount of prostrations the amount of jesus prayers so called quote unquote my jesus prayer that like you know my rule or whatever that i'm doing that does that speaks so much more and i i mean it just that the saying is the person that's still just doing the, like saint Natarios, there's a story where he had like i don't know what the equivalent but 20 dollars left or something like that and he gave it away and the person that worked with him was really upset and it's just like i don't know if i would have given that 20 dollars away i would have been like well i need it you know like i need that so i'm gonna hold on to it so so that's another this, thing I think. this is this yeah oh, go ahead sorry father go ahead. go ahead no forgive me i just want to say sacrifice that's all it's got to stay this is this is it's like well it's not funny that you said this because this was exactly like as you were saying this father this is the same essential concept that was coming to me and it's interesting because it's it's just wild again like these things are wild but it's like been in the last let's say month that this particular pattern and the pattern is and i think what you're describing andrew is like and this has been a struggle for me and 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 I I am still struggling with it, and I am still coming to grips with it, and I am staying in prayer about it. But it is this like, what is like, what really is faith, right? Like, what what really is faith? You know, like what is the real manifestation of you with faith? Is it's like, it's one thing to say, oh, God will take care of it, and it's another thing to really act as though God is going to take care of it. Right. Trust. Because to, to, to most people, when you really act in faith, it's insane. It's insane. But like what? And this was something for one of the ways like Holy Week was transformative for me was because I like. I really, really was like, I know I, I really know, like Christ is going to take care of like the things that need to be taken care of. I was like, I know I really, really know this. And like even talking with my wife and be like, no, 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 I really, really know this. And. But now what I'm struggling with is like, now I look back and I see that that has been the case. And now even recently, like I could say within the last couple of days, one of those very things that I was concerned about fretting over, like almost magically solves itself. Like in a way that I could never have imagined, like out of the blue, no, absolutely no input from me, solves itself but but a gigantic demand of me that it's like oh it's solved like you can take it and it's solved but guess what you've got to get you're you're going to be humbled right now mm. like you're going to have to eat it's going to be solved but you're going to eat humble pie to do this mm. like you're going to do something that your pride in another situation would have made you go like absolutely not not because it's immoral, it. not because it's unethical, nothing, because your pride and things that you had said in the past and things you had represented about yourself and said about other people would prevent you from doing this. And it's like, oh, but I'll solve it. But it's solved. That to me, that occurrence, especially right after Holy Week in this way. And a thing that I couldn't fix myself has is absolutely blowing my mind you know why as i'm even saying this you know why the whole thing is this is so important man. because god loves you it's uh, trying to figure this out no, man no i just there's what it was there to figure out god loves you mm. i mean i mean god loves you it, it's his love is shown for you you are so terrible you need him to give you a sign of, of figuring it out. That's true. You know what I mean? The real, the real, he just does that to like help to get you on board. The real work, the real love was, was calling you to humility because mm. he loves you. He loves you. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? That, mm -hmm. that. <laughs> People hate this, but it's so true. It's like, it's like jerk church, right? Mm. God accepts you as you are, but he loves you enough not to, not to leave you that way. <laughs> People hate hearing that, but guess what, Jack? It's true. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's true. And you and I are so weak, we need him to like to you know clean our messes up, whatever. But he kills a million birds with one stone. A million of them. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. He'll he has no problem fixing the context of, of yeah. your situation. But to show you the need for humility, now that's a real miracle. It's like St. John Chrysostom, you know, when he says like, oh, forgive me for butchering his his holy words, but he he essentially says something to the effect of, it's a greater miracle to change the heart of a man than to, you know, raise the dead, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's, let me tell you something. The hardest thing in the world is when someone is just, their sin is, it's so obvious to everyone else but them. That's so hard. And, and I fail over and over and over again. I, I have good intentions, but I fail trying to communicate that to people in a way that like they won't run away screaming and, you know, damning my name to hell, which you know, they do it all the time. So it's like, I'm always, you know, but to, but to try to show someone like, look, you know, like, can't you just see, like, just humble yourself right now. It's so hard for us. And so God has to give us, God has to bribe us. You know what I mean? God, forgive me for putting it. Yeah. That he has to bribe yeah. us all the time. Like, okay, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, it's the hardest thing for us to, to just humble ourselves, man. But also the choice being there and it being a really strong choice too, to be like, well, no, you, you could say no to this. Like That's right. it could easily be like, mm, no, I'll stick, I'll stick by my pride. I won't, you know what I mean? I won't, do I, it I won't time, be different. People, How many times I've done it so many times yeah, in my life. People, we, we do it all, all the time. And this is another reason why, you know, the natural man doesn't know the things of the spirit. All these people, I mean, God this, God that, God's mean, God's capricious, God's been like, if he is, if he exists, I want nothing to do with him because he's just looking to zap me. It's just like, you, you've, you've obviously never encountered God because it's quite the opposite. When you know God, you're like, I can't believe how long suffering God is. For real. I cannot real. believe how long suffering God is. Has you become more and more aware of the wreckage you're just leaving around you all oh the time? Oh my goodness. Oh it's my goodness. Like I am I am beyond the bull in the China shop. I'm I'm yeah, I'm something better than that. Or something worse than that. But father, I had a quick question. Um uh what does it mean? Because I know that there's probably an easy answer, but I think it's more nuanced than I think it is. And this is a little bit of a change of stuff, but what does it mean to judge someone? Like, what does it mean to be like? That's because, a good question and a good topic. That's a very good question. Yeah, because I mean, it's like, oh, that person looks fat in those pants. Like, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily think that's it. Or, oh, that person's obviously being a jerk. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's a little bit more nuanced than that. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, I just got it today. Let me read you this quote uh, one of my brothers said earlier. It's from speaking of Blessed Sarah from Rose, right? Don't criticize or judge other people. Regard everyone else as an angel. Oh, yes. Justif- justify their mistakes and weaknesses and condemn only yourself as the worst sinner. This is step one in any kind of spiritual life. Amen. I love that quote. I okay. love it but let's so give it just, some- justify there so justify say uh, i get it i get yeah. why this person is doing this thing that they're doing so so let's let's give it some context okay because the context is everything because some people they they take these things and they have a an inappropriate uh approach to it right um and and the inappropriate approach comes from they're not aware of their own context, right? So some people, they, you know, <laughs> they'll say this, but they're really quoting Tupac more than they are St. Seraphim. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because what they mean is, you know, 
uh, I can do anything I want. Don't judge me. That's not what Father Seraphim's talking about. All right. That's not what Father Seraphim's talking about, right? Father Seraphim is, is Father Seraphim could 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 almost posit it like this, you know, not to try to expound on 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 a blessed, you know, I mean he's a saint, right? But blessed uh, a blessed statement like that. But you know, if we are humble, we will recognize, you know, the <laughs> the log, the two by four in our eye versus the speck in our brothers. He's just, he's just expounding on our Lord's teaching there from my perspective, right? Because let me go a little bit deeper with that because, because this is real key, right? There's, let me give you some qualifications of what it means, right? So are you in a place of authority? Like, do you have, do you have the type of, do you have the authority, the responsibility over someone? And if you do, do you have the love? Because you need both those qualifications. Because some people were like, well, what do you do? Like, okay, like, you know, I've had this exchange with people before, like, well, how come you get to judge, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, um, I don't judge in that sense, but I inspect fruit for sure. Yeah. I, I have to inspect fruit. That's, that's my job, right? That's, and that's my job. And a lot of people, because of their immaturity, they don't understand what that, they don't understand that distinction. Now, let me say one more thing, then I'll, you know, kind of back off. But the other thing that to help understand that is Christ is the judge. And so when we talk about don't judge, what that means is in an absolute sense. So in other words, Cyprian, you're arrogant. Versus, well, right now in this situation, you know, it seems like you're, you know, <laughs> you're being tipped with some arrogance, you know what I mean? Like, but I'm not saying like your essence of who you are for eternity in an absolute sense, that's what you are, right? That is, Putting that is where you start. It. What's that? But yeah, the stamp. Upon it. Putting the stamp on it. Like that's, that alone is Christ's job is to give that absolute assessment of, of the situation. Thank Thank God for that. You know, thank God that Christ is the final judge. Like, thank God. That's, re God. that's really important, actually, Father. You know what? I'm realizing I'm very bad at that. I'm very bad. At, I totally could be better at that. Like, I, tot I totally can, like, point out the, the things that, that, like, I'm seeing if I'm interacting with an individual. But I am, I am someone who has, I will be better about it, but I am someone who has been terrible about just, like, saying, like I've told many a person, you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. Those are words that have come out of my mouth in the past mm -hmm. where I've looked somebody dead in the eye and said, you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I could tell you in saying that, that, that people have been brought to tears by that. Mm -hmm. Like people who, people who have been like actually being really sort of evil toward me. And I've said to them, you know what? You're a bad person. Those words right there will shake somebody to their core. And I've been horrible about that. I've used it as a weapon. As opposed to really just saying, okay, here's what's going on and identifying what's going on and talking about that. And maybe, you know what? Yeah, because. Yeah, that's, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. That's yeah, kind of an I accusation, mean, isn't it? Like that. And that's kind of more in the, the enemy's, the enemy's wheelhouse than God's. So then father, I have a follow-up question and maybe we're going to get a little bit too nuanced and I apologize for that, but I'm just very curious about this because I've been thinking about it uh, because us as Orthodox, once we're baptized, we're given a certain amount of authority, correct? Because I was just talking with a brother from the church about this the other day. And he took what I thought, what I thought was a little bit of an extreme view on the do not judge thing. And I was like, look, at the end of the day, like Megan Fox is talking about drinking her partner's machine gun Kelly's blood, right? I can say definitively, that's evil. Only like in a ritual cool. context, Andrew. Only she said it was context. only in a ritual context. <laughs> and that's and so I'm not saying that's a bad person. I'm not saying she's going to hell. I'm not saying either one of them are going to hell. But what I am saying is I can definitively say that's not good. Like that is that's satanic. It's demonic to do that. So how wrong was I? 
Like, I mean, because like I was kind of in a, like not in a very good mood at that moment when I was talking to that person, I have love for that brother. Like I wasn't attacking him, but I was saying, cause he was saying like, you know, we try not to judge stuff like that. And I was like, but I can say that is definitively evil. I can say that certain things done within the last two years, I can say definitively abortion is evil. And that like, that's the, I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that some of the authority that's been given to me by Christ, you know, in baptism and such and such and such. So it doesn't mean I go around and go, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, or I can do that, but you know. But so I can't speak for everyone else, but you guys, you know, you're my spiritual children. You tell me, right? Like, um, some people complain that I'm sometimes too laissez faire. Mm. I'm just saying, mm. some people complain that I'm too laissez faire about things. I, I mean, you know, I don't know. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because. I have every right in, in, in cases of, of being a spiritual father, right? Having that authority, right? Um, it's, you know, I'm charged with that, right? On top of the love I have for my spiritual children, right? I do not run in and charge in on every single thing, right? Um, in fact, you know... <laughs> For all you listening, if you think I'm hard on you, uh. <laughs> read the canons. Right? Read the canons. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, all this is really important because, again, it's 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 love, right? And, and understanding, not love as in the type of you know, like. So on the one hand, we can't fall into the error on the left, right? and conflating mercy with indifference, right? Because mercy is infused with love and hope of repentance. I give someone mercy hoping they'll repent. That's the only reason why I give mercy, right? If I don't think someone's gonna repent, like you wanna know a little secret about me, you know, whatever, you know, those of you who are my, you know, uh, whatever, <laughs> however you relate to me, I'll tell you a secret. If I'm coming down on, if I come down hard on you, it, that's still love. You know why? Because I'm scared you're not going to get it. You're not really repenting. That That's the only reason why I come down hard on someone. I don't come down hard because like, yeah, I'm a human, whatever, but I don't, I don't come down hard because it's just like out of pure frustration or whatever. It's like, this is serious, like I and I'm not getting any sense of repentance from you, right? The person who's like, man, blah blah blah, it's like, okay, mercy, mercy, because I'm just like, you, you're blind, you're not getting it, or like, you know, there's this obstacle, and I, I'm hoping, I'm waiting on God to give that kind of seed of, of repentance, you know what I mean? But the kind of obstinate, willful, which happens, right? I know I'm being this way, and I don't care. Well, you know, so that tendency to want to be like, well, we have, we don't really judge these things. No, we do. We have to, because if not, we fall into this air of indifference, God, and God forbid that we would, you know, sin less grace to bound as St. Paul says, God forbid. Right. Um, but this is a real important distinction because you know, um, again, talked to about this before, probably. I just feel like I'm, I am that old man. Who cares? I am. I'm That's the old okay. man who himself. It is what it is. Um, you know, I tell the kids this, you know. Uh, you know, God is merciful, right? God is merciful. God's mercy, 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 mercy. Like, the, the only reason why the world's still existing is the prayers of holy ones and God's mercy, right? But, like, where is that line where God's mercy ends? Well, I'll tell you where God's mercy ends. When your lack of repentance leads you to now begin to inflict harm on, on the innocent and those who, you know, th those who are innocent essentially, right? God's mercy then has to become God's justice. And by the way, when I say God's justice, this isn't um, 
who are those people uh, with the signs? Uh, Westboro Baptist Church? Yeah, yeah. They say Westboro Baptist, right? God's justice is still his love, right? But God's justice is his, God's justice is the defense of the defenseless. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? God's justice is, is the active engagement of his love as chastisement and protection. That's what God's justice is. It's not retribution. Mm. It's not vengeance. It's not, you know what I mean? It's God balancing, right? God just God flexing his strength and, and, and restoring balance. That's that's justice, right? And the mercy ends when it's just like, okay, well, you've clearly, you know, crossed a the line there, Jack, where like you're you're not you're not demonstrating any real desire to want to, you know, repent in, in, in a will in a willingly in a, in a willing way. So here comes the justice, you know. Does, do you, does that make sense? Um, yeah. This, this is this is about this is about like and this is yet another thing that has come up and and this feeling and I, I think it's related to this is like this proximity to god this the 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 closeness right so like i would i would hear people like evangelicals or whatever, i'm just doing this to get like closer to god and it was uh, but i never there there was like there was nothing there there was no meat to it but this this realization that like yeah when you're that it's just like God's going to do what God is. And the, when you're in the proximity, it's like when you get into that proximity, these things can happen. Right. But it's almost like, and correct me if I'm wrong, in terms, if I'm misinterpreting this, that if it's like, if you just refuse to repent, you just get further and further and further away. And these sort of things that otherwise could be provided to you, that mercy, that grace, it's just like, it just gets fainter and faint. It's not that you're being, it's not that there's something punitive. It's not that there's some retribution. It's not that you're being punished. It's just like, you're just stepping further and further out of the light. And it's just like, well, yeah, the light can't reach you. And there's bad things in the dark. Yeah. So the, it's not a caveat, but the, um, I guess to add further to that, which is what I also told the kids is, well, how does God judge then? Because it's not vengeance, right? Because God's not petty, right? Well, God withdraws himself, <laughs> you know, and when, and when God withdraws himself, those of you who've experienced it, you know, it's, it's, man, the loss of grace is terrible, right? And that's mercy in and of itself, right? That is mercy in and of itself. Yeah. Because when God's around, all we can think about is the bad stuff we've done. Sometimes that's what Metropolitan Anthony Bloom said anyway, was that God tends to, we notice, if we notice one thing about God a lot, it's his absence. And that's really a mercy in and of itself, because when he shows up, sometimes I've experienced it where, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And I start thinking about all the stuff I've done wrong. And it's like I'm not beating myself up, but it's just like it, it, it can be kind of excruciating for a little bit. I'm just like, oh, wow. OK, yep. And just to be clear to everyone, that's not God. That's that's the light. You see yourself honestly mm. because of the the amount of light. It's not God being like, oh, and by the way, Andrew, I'm here. I'm showing up. You oh, yeah. you did this. It's not that at all. It's just like. You can't help you know, who he is. Yeah. Yeah. You, I look. I look, Yeah. You look great. Whatever. Well, let's put a light on you. Let's see how great you're in. Let's see all those blemishes. Right. right. Like, take the Instagram filter off. Take the filter off. One or, of my or, or the light shines right through. It breaks the Instagram filter, basically. One of my favorite stories, and it's really quick, is it was it was a conviction without a doubt when I was pretty early orthodox, I was still working in a kitchen, and it was my job to clean our prep kitchen, and I was trying to get out of there, and I was just like cutting corners left and right, not sweeping underneath tables, just sweeping around them, and I was just like kind of just putting stuff wherever I could find it, blah, 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 just not doing a great job. I was thinking I was trying to meet my now wife for dinner or something like that. I was just trying to get out of there, and I will never forget the sense of dread because this wasn't common uh, when I talked to my sous chef and I was like, hey, I'm going to get out of here. He said, yeah, I'm going to go check your work. And I will never remember the sense of dread that I felt. I was like, I know I've not done a good enough job. And I know he's going to go through and he's going to point out all the things I've done. And it's just like, I was like, OK, so that's a little taste of what Judgment Day will be like. Just a little taste of like knowing that 
I've made myself look okay if you walk through the prep kitchen real quick, but any any closer examination is going to yield that Andrew was just very much trying to get out of here. So, um, so Father, um, I kind of wanted to get, and we've got another 40 or so minutes, and I think this would be a time to touch on this because I, I don't necessarily want to get into the filioque way or anything like that, um, but the next part of... Um, this talks about the next part of the creed talks about um who proceeds from the father and who with the father and the son together is worshiped and glorified he spake by the prophets and so i've heard and i i'm an orthodox christian trinity one in essence undivis uh, indivisible you know that that's my bread and butter but so there's the father and then there's christ is referred to as the second person of the trinity so would that make the Holy Spirit the third person of the Trinity? Yeah. Or does it not necessarily work like that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So then, it, just advocating, I just want to understand the issue. That does not, I guess, how does that... It's not that... a matter of third as in subordinate to. Sure. And that's what I'm trying to get to. Not that's not what I'm trying subordinate. to get to. Yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not subordinate to... The father has primacy in the sense that he's the source. Okay. But the son is begotten and the spirit proceeds from. The spirit proceeds from the father. Not through the son, but from the father. Right? Sure. Which is where it gets mixed up with the Catholics, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then it gets the whole thing. It's the subord subordinationism and all that stuff. Yeah. But like, it's not. For us, we experience it, and we do experience this in, to some degree in a kind of linear sense, because remember our Lord's, you know, the master, he says, or Jesus, he says, it's good for you that I go away, that I would send the comforter, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's, a, that's a historical thing, right? That there's a historical linear relation that we enter into. But that doesn't, that doesn't necessitate that the Holy Spirit is subordinate to the Son in that sense, right? Yeah, because like if someone was like, hey, when you run upstairs, will you grab Father Turbo? I'd be like, yeah, I'll send Father down. Like that doesn't mean that Father is subordinate to me. Like if Father's right. in the basement of the church right. and someone's like, hey, do you know where Father is? They're like, yeah, he's upstairs. I'll run up and send him down. That doesn't yeah. mean that like Father is subordinate to me. Right. Like that just means I'm like, hey, could you go down there? Right. And, you know, the Lord said, you know, again, it's like better that I go away. You know, you know what I mean? So there's. It's better that I leave and I'll send Father Turbo down. Yeah. yeah. Um, OK, so then, yeah, I don't want to get into a whole filioque thing. Um, so I'll tackle that next time or something. But... Yeah, because that's a, that's a whole episode in and of itself. I just wanted to. I don't know. I guess I just wanted to get an understanding. So then, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to sound, please correct any heresy I'm getting ready to say. And if there's a heresy, I'm sorry. It's because I've misspoken. So Christ is begotten of the Father. So was there a time before Christ was begotten? No. Okay. For all ages. For all ages. For all, all, all ages. Sure. But by the way, let me just say this. Let me take a little rabbit trail since we got time. We talked about heresy before, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure. Like, you know, something else for this crowd, this our audience. Don't like. I'm really keen on not throwing that word around. It gets thrown around way too easily. It, it, it takes it takes the gravitas out of it, which is the main problem, right? When when a word is thrown around, you know. Um, but I used it. Did I not use it correctly? Because I'm, I'm not trying to have a differing. No, 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 not necessarily. I mean, I mean, you you used it in the sense of like you could be throwing out a heresy, like an established heresy, and not realize. It. I, yes. I get that. Yes. Right? I'm just taking the opportunity to teach on something. Oh, sure. That, okay. Like, that I think is important because, you know, God forbid any of the people in our audience who's, you know, 
on Twitter fighting with people needlessly, right? But like heresy is like a thing people throw around and like, I just let's just be really clear about heresy, right? Andrew saying something wrong theologically and dogmatically unknowingly is not heresy, right? You may be quoting a heresy, but you're not in heresy, right? Now, if, you know, your wife comes to me and says, Father, Andrew said this and this and that, and I think it's heresy. And I'm like, okay, well, go tell him, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And she comes back and she's like, yeah, I told him. He said, like, I don't care. And I said, okay, well, tell Andrew to come here. And then you come here and I'm like, hey, Andrew, you know, are you teaching that there's nine people in the Trinity? Yeah, because I blah, 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 blah. Well, listen, there isn't nine people in the Trinity. And I show you the canons and I show you the councils and da, da, da. And you're like, yeah, I still think blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, mm, okay, you know, now you're in heresy. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, someone came to you, you know, one on one, you don't hear them. She, this person brought you to the elder of the church, the presbyter, right? Elder, presbyter. Boom. You didn't receive it. You know, like the first correction, the second was, okay, like, are you, you know, are you sticking to this yet? Boom. All right. You're cut. You know what I mean? And then there's, there, there are, there's a whole nother series of, of, actions and problems from that right that's heresy right but so but you know let's play it back the other way around i don't know if you're right i mean blah blah blah, whatever okay you come to me and i'm like no blah blah, blah and i show you ecumenical counselor like oh man i feel really stupid forgive me yeah mm. no problem god bless you right okay and so that's why when people you know, getting back to what we were talking about earlier about people who are like too sensitive, like, well, we shouldn't judge. It's like, well, Sunday of Orthodoxy, we read those anathemas. Hopefully you're in a parish where, where those anathemas are read, you know, like, you know, boom, that that's that's a thing, right? Like, why do we read those anathemas? And why when you read, listen to the Hymnography of the Church, why are you so brutal with, with Arius and like Eutyches and all this stuff? It's because they're heretics, right? And when we say heretics, and do that it's because not because they were innocent and just being like well i didn't know but but it's like they're like no nope. the doubling down yep i, doubling I double down. down you know what i mean it's the doubling down so so i just wanted to bring that up you know that's because when we use the word heretic or heresy it should sting yeah it, it shouldn't be this like oh you're a heretic it's like no you know forgive me just because I think it's our. That's simple. Well, I mean, thing, I'll just use the example, right? It's like racism, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect example. Well, royal path time, right? It's like newsflash to everyone. I don't care if you are listening to uh, JLP, whatever, but like, yes, that is a thing. Yeah. Has it, has it been blown like way out of proportion and distorted and all that? Of course, yeah. But let, like, I, I will just tell all of anyone who's listening, just so we're clear, like, okay, on the one hand, yes. Uh, if you disagree with anything, right, you're a racist. Yes, that's absurd and it's ridiculous. But I, I think in some regards, it's, it's you know, still, damage is done and it's still it's 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 accomplishing an even more nefarious goal right mm -hmm. because it is i mean it, it it's a thing and it, and it actually does exist so like the boy who cried wolf it's like the boy who cried wolf right and and so it's just important to to recognize that right because once you take the sting out of something like that it's like it it has even graver consequences i think you know what i mean and not only that, I cannot remember. I've been racking my Saint Paisios, I believe, talked about a saint, or it was Saint Paisios himself who's being accused of uh, by, I believe, demons. And he said, "You're a liar. Yep, you're uh, you're you're full of lust. Yep, I am. It's like you're full of anger. Yep, you're a heretic. No, I'm not a heretic, because if I were a heretic, I'm cut off from God. Like that's if any accusation. He was taking them all." except for the you're a heretic it's like no i'm not i'm not a heretic because that is 
a far bigger deal than all of the other ones because a heretic would be cut off from God. And I heretic is cut off. A heretic has cut themselves off from God. Yes. Yeah. Willingly, knowingly, right? The doubling down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I don't remember what the original question was. It was something about high, high, the, like trinity theology and i'm not sure i'm in the place to talk about that right now because you know i'm just i'm still confused i i tend to just accept things as they are they say one in essence indivisible I'm like cool and then when you start getting into the meat of it i start getting confused and then that's when i'm like i get kind of lost so well there, it's a mystery i mean how far can we are we even supposed to dig much further than that it seems probably, fruitless probably not me probably not not this guy but I mean, intellectually, it seems like something that it's not going to there's there's yeah, there's I mean, no because way to get there intellectually. It, yeah. And it, I mean, I think that there's some base things, the um, the preceding, the begotten, you know, the 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 primacy or not the primacy. That's not the word I'm looking for. The source is that the word I'm looking for. Father is the source, the father. Yeah. Yeah. The father is the source. The there's, source. OK, yeah, is the source. Mm -hmm. all right okay so um uh Cyprian, that's why when me... jesus says you know basically my father's greater than i you know jesus pointing to the father right like yeah how is that in in regards to them being you know all of one essence you know like well that's maybe that's what i'm asking about maybe that's what i'm asking about so yeah i'm anything i'm going to say i'm going to be worried is not is not i'm going to take a week and think about this so and pray about it because I, I don't think i'm in the spot right now to talk about it so anyway heretic is a big deal and yeah that word is probably thrown around too much and anathema is probably thrown around too much you know i don't know so anyway cyprian you got anything i'm floundering here and we still got 20 minutes left well no i mean i still there there are some things about this stanza what do we call it stanza verse there are some things about this that, that I do have Sorry. questions about. So um, the Lord, the giver of life. I, I, it's what the, how do we understand the, the giver, the Lord, the giver of life, right? Because Christ is usually the Lord. Christ is usually referred to as Lord, the person of Christ. And then the giver of life, I'm trying to understand what is the, how, how do we, how do we understand, uh, how do we understand that? And then obviously uh who spake by the prophets so is that then when prophecy occurs prophecy the occurs words of the holy, holy spirit, spirit? Mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. can we yeah. talk about a little bit about that is it the is it the words of the holy spirit so or is it the holy spirit manip like the, can we talk about that a little bit like so yeah so there's some things there um the noose is um the the noose is um made in the likeness or the fashioned after the the spirit but it's not the it's not the um it's the holy it's like the holy spirit doesn't pull a piece of himself off and plant it inside you right so so what is the noose because we talk about the noose all the time i i think i have an idea of it but i don't think yeah so you don't, you don't have it you don't have an idea of what it is because i don't either <laughs> so the noose the the noose is the eye of the heart it's the throne of god um it's the deep it's the deep heart so um the noose when you read when you when you read the Neptic Fathers, when you get into the patristic writings, noose and soul is interchangeable in the sense of, you know, there's an overlap there, but um, there's a there's a there's some particular kind of there's there's some particular aspects of the noose in which we can distinguish it from the soul as we kind of understand the soul, right? So um, what I mean soul is like the kind of like neo-pagan the Protestant neo-pagan understanding that people are swimming in, right? Like people have this neo-pagan Gnostic Protestant view of the soul being this thing inside you trapped in the cage of your body and you know, 
you just kind of gotta like get out that's your true that that's that's not that's not the case like it's better to understand actually like the soul is kind of in, surrounded and immersed in the body is surrounded and immersed in the soul if that makes sense right the soul is the animating force that um well the spirit is the animating force that 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 is different from the soul like okay let's let's walk this back in order to get into this we have to get into like well what is the what is the soul before we get into like to, into the noose right so there's different there's different types of of soul right so um animals and plants have a soul have soul but they're not soul in the sense of like that we have soul right the they don't have spirit in that sense right so there is a there is a there's a, a a life force within you know a plant right you can acknowledge that it grows you know um there is a life force with you know with an animal but but it's it's the life force within the soul of an animal, it, it, it's contained within the energy and the life of that animal in of itself. So in other words, when an animal dies, that's it, right? There, there is no immortality to the soul, to the, the animating as the animated aspect of an animal. A human being, our souls are immortal because of the spirit. Now, that immortality is bequeathed unto us because of God, not because of the spirit in of itself. And the reason for that being is because the spirit is fashioned and made after the likeness of the Holy Spirit. That's that's a way of understanding, but it's not the Holy Spirit in of itself. Does that if that makes sense, right? Yep. Um, so with that being said, now understanding the news. The noose is the portion of our soul that is able to perceive God, able to perceive the higher reality, right? So um, understand when we say that man is made in God's image, what do we mean? We're not talking about the anthropomorphic aspect of like, I have hands, fingers, and toes. That's not it. We will project our anthropomorphic aspect onto God when actually what it should be is we should see man in a tripartite state. God is Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? Um, you have... Uh, mind you know news you have logos reason word right you have spirit right so man's soul is tripartite it's, it's made of these three aspects right and the heart not the cardia not the like right although the cardia is is a icon of the heart, but it's the, when we speak of the heart, it's not speaking of the cardia, right? Um, the the noose is the eye of the heart. It's the place in which the deep part of the deep man, right? We talked about that. That's that's how we see. It's better for me. It's easier for me to explain it in this way. Um, this isn't exactly it, but to give some people approximation. You know, when you're driving, right? You've driven, you know, to your grandma's house, which is a two hour drive, whatever. And you've made this drive, you know, every other week for the last four years. You could do it almost blindfolded, right? And you've gotten, how many times have you gotten home from coming to grandma's house? You're like, you pull the drive, you're like, how'd I get here, right? Don't even remember making Don't the I remember, drive. right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So you're making the drive home from grandma, and all you can think about is your sister and how sick she is and how you like are praying for her. Like, you, you, you follow what I'm saying? You're starting to get under a closer, uh, I'm not saying that's exactly it, 
where you're starting to get a closer approximation of, of, of your noose, right? Versus like your mind, because the word mind is also interchangeable. Soul, mind, noose, th those words will be interchangeable, but you, you understand what the fathers mean when, when you read that. They're not talking about your mind in, re in regards of discursive knowledge or even tacit knowledge of like, um, you know, oh, what is this, right? The news isn't dealing with what is this in that sense, right? Um, but it is dealing with it in the sense of what is it in the sense of how the what and the why begins to converge. Does, does that make sense, right? Because the exclusive of the what that's a chair and it's made from maple wood. And then I have, you know what I mean? That's not the news, right? But the chair in regards of it almost, and I don't mean in this sense, but for those of you who know what I mean, in like in a platonic and the platonic form sense of what is the chair? Like, do you, so that's what I mean by the convergence of the what and the why, where those begin the, to- The significance back. of the chair, the, the meaning of the chair. The if you were to be like, if you were to be like, oh, my grandpa had a chair just like that, and you like were taken back to that spot where you saw like your grandpa's chair or something like that, like, like the, yes, but not just in. See, what you're talking about is more about sentimentality, which that's not what we're talking about. For oh, well, I meant. Oh well, yeah, the, I am. Yeah, yeah, you are, and which okay. is good. I'm glad you brought that up because people need to know the distinction, right? Because sentimentality is a thing, and the news, like the sentimentality, can actually cloud your news. And this is where a lot of, you know, write me your hate mail, everybody, forgive me. But this is one of the portions where sometimes, I'm gonna get in trouble, here we go. This is some of the portions where sometimes women can, can struggle a little bit more because they have a greater sensitivity um, to emotions and, the, and they have a greater temptation to conflate emotion with spiritual things right so sentiment <laughs> sentimentality can cloud the noose and and men are sub and men are you know susceptible to this as well but this is just a fact you know what i mean like women are weaker in certain areas and certain men are weaker in other areas right but like we have to be careful i'm glad it gets brought up because i spend a lot of time trying to get people to really become sober in regards of their emotions and emotionalism because they will conflate it with spirituality and it, it clouds your news, clouds your ability to discern what is of God, what isn't of God, mm. right? What is spiritual? Is the, is the news something that makes things, is, is that what makes things shine forth? Like we have this experience of something shining forth where we're just like, it's not sentimentality, it's not anything, but there's a significance discernment. to something. It's, the noose is the faculty by which we are able to discern what is of God, what is it of God, what is okay. You know, um, that's why when I brought up like, you notice I the 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 example I brought up I think is a good one in regards of like your grandma, and you're thinking about your sister who's sick, right? If you were thinking about your girlfriend who you miss and like oh blah blah, blah that's not really your noose, that's something else, right? But that kind of like my my sister's sick and she could die, right? And and what and and the kind of like acute sorrow that brings in, right? That that's it. that's why I said it's not exactly it, but you're kind of getting close to to what that is, right? Um, when you are, you know, those moments when you know we've all had them, right? Where we're praying, we're saying our prayers, and you realize like. I'm just saying words right now. Where am I? Just like the drive home, something happens. You're like, God, forgive me. That's a flash of your news kind of op like awakening, the eye opening up. You know what I mean? Um, or, or the positive inverse of that is you're praying and it's like, you're praying. Okay, great. And then you hit a line in, or the Psalter, you know, everyone's, well, not everyone. Those of you at the experience, you're, you're praying you're not just reading the Psalter now, but you're praying the Psalter. It's like, it's just, you're there. You're there, right? That's your, yeah. that's your news. That's your news, right? Uh, you have Holy Communion, right? And then there's just this, some have not had this yet. God willing, some of you will have it one of these days, but 
you have Holy Communion and it's like, there's a real, like there's a, there, you just feel a love for it, for, you feel a love and a, and a connection with everyone there. And it isn't this kind of like, yeah, man, it's like, it's something qualitatively different. It isn't the kind of camaraderie you have after you won the game with your teammates. It's not that, it's different, right? No, 100%. That's your noose perceiving that yeah right so it's like so there there's a lot going on there you know it's what i mean the, it's like the organ in which you can experience god right it is it is the organ in which you can experience god so if you quote unquote see the light or not quote unquote but when you see the light that's an interaction between god yeah and what are you talking about because the uncreated light right people yeah. do see the light the uncreated light yeah they see it through their noose sure because it's not the eye okay i got no, you but that's it's the it. eye of the heart not these children right? yeah it's the eye of the heart okay and so it becomes so it becomes apparent it becomes apparent but it's clearly it's not your eyes ears imagination no taste smell no. any of those things it's something no. different it's something different but there is overlap at times mm. there is there is overlap at times because we're not gnostic no and yes we're not gnostic and there is overlap at times right so all this becomes important because when you begin to understand the cleaning of the noose getting back to the sensitivity of the holy spirit and the balance and all that well what's the organ that helps you keep that balance serve to soleil in the spiritual sense it's the noose right okay. and that's why you want your noose to be clean and healthy and strong right um Certain things dirty your noose and weaken your noose. So Confuse the noose gets noose. probably sloggy when you eat a bunch of food. Like your noose kind of gets like kind of full up of like junk. Yeah, like you can't pray in a full stomach. Yeah. Right. That, that gets into other things too. But like when I'm talking about clouding the noose in particular, like, you know, God help us, we're contributing to some degree of it because it's like the medium is the message in some regards, right? In many regards, like... <laughs> Like, I'm just telling everybody, sorry, right? I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to myself just as much as you, but like scrolling through your Orthodox news feed is going to contribute to clouding your news. Mm -hmm. Because one of the key things to, this, to clouding your news is distraction, right? Because one of the key things, remember we talked about balance and like, this whole correlation of balance and like, right, Cirque du Soleil dude and, and chick are like, their physiques Focus. are gnarly, right? They're focused though. They're focused, right? So the noose, you want to strengthen your noose, it's focus. The the fruit of your noose being fo being strengthened is focus. It, it's both and, right? Strengthening the noose comes through focus. And the evidence and the fruit of a strengthened noose is focus, right? Scrolling literally not like when i mean literally i don't mean in like the, the figure speech but the literal act of scrolling right like swiping away like whatever it 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 weakens our sense of attention I, I just i was just lamenting this the other day i was like man i destroyed myself you know what i mean yeah so it's you know here's the good news if you like there there's an elastic like our our brains are elastic far more than people realize right and so is our news in the sense fast like that whole thing like people roll their eyes at it like all the jaded you know um all the jaded super lefty ortho folk like oh whatever like because those people exist who they roll their eyes we've talked about this early on right they roll their eyes at the elders they roll their eyes at the fathers. They roll their, you know what I mean? And and orthodoxy is just a kind of intellectual. Um, it's neat. It's really neat. Not just neat, but it's it's kind of like an intellectual. Yeah, I'm trying to think like. Academic. Uh, I'm just it, not nailing it with this. No, like. I don't want to just be so pejorative about like SJW, but you know what I'm saying? It's this, it's this kind of like softer, smarter, politer, politically yeah. correct Christianity, right? That's what people, you know, um, 
certain <laughs> certain Greek hierarchs one. Anyways, so um very that, certain that, that's not it, right? And like and and so the thing is is like the reality of fasting from those things is real. And people want to roll their eyes at it and they, you know, but I'm telling you, if you're rolling your eyes at it, you've never done it. Once you've done it, and it's real simple. Once if 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 you've fasted from, you know, not just social media, but the use of your smartphone with the intention of, of you know, refocusing your news, then you won't roll your eyes anymore because you know it works. Yeah. Harder like, to do than not eating, by the way, Father. Much for harder me, to do. especially like as long as I've been been at it, you know what I mean? surprisingly hard to do and yet all of a sudden like the focus comes back very quickly mm -hmm. it doesn't take longer it takes like a day and then you're like oh i'm a different person this is wild mm -hmm. the, the place i work at uh when you enter treatment uh you have to give up your phone for three weeks no internet no phone no nothing and uh, i know a fair amount of people that don't want their phone back afterwards after the three weeks like i'm i'm okay i don't i really don't want it back Someone, a brother from church told me one time, I said, kind of like, I was like, oh crap, I forgot my phone at my car. And they're like, they like stopped me like treasure this time that you don't have your phone. Like, and it's not accessible to you. Like treasure this time, like let it sit out there. You're in church, just let it be out there. And coincidentally enough, I get absolutely no reception in my church and at St. Mary's. Like I get it's just a like it's abysmal there's like no point bringing my phone in yeah and let's let's always remember this hopefully this will put a shiver down somebody's spine hopefully attention equals worship mm. oh i was and i was just about to that that draws in directly because i you know i caught this this lex friedman interview speaking of i was on the scroll i caught this lex friedman interview with grimes who we've talked about on on this show before and we've mentioned, you know, uh, Elon Musk, baby mama. And um, <coughs> he said something. I don't know whether Elon got this. From, I'm starting to think maybe Elon was getting some of this stuff from her and not the other way around. Uh, but, you know, she was like, we're not humans anymore. We are now not homo sapiens. We're homo techno. And we are cyborgs because of our phones have made us cyborgs now. And this attention versus worship, it's and and of course, she's you know, big transhumanist, just like Elon's a big transhumanist. And it's like, yep, how to and and speaking very openly about the fact that like the phone is the gateway drug to you no longer being human, to you being trans to, to, to you being merged with the machine is that phone, and you're gonna take it because you've taken the phone very Throw interesting in the, the way that she just walked right through it but was totally in support of it she's like this is the way this is where we have to go mm -hmm. this is where we, which is clearly worshiping something else mm -hmm. clearly worshiping something else mm -hmm. and it's gnostic because it's like well the elimination of the body right it's just the same thing well just to give a little bit of juicy tidbit as we roll out, because it's about that time, mm -hmm. you know, this gets us into a whole thing about the mark and, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, it, you know, understanding it on a much more expansive level. You know, It I mean? feels a lot closer, Father. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, and, and all of us should, you know, God forbid any of us think that we are, you know, keyed in on something, like we need to continue to be humble because um, you know everyone here that's that's here in this conversation, we all got phones. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mine's right next to me. As we see, right I mean, I'm saying it's my right. I'm you know, convicting myself. <laughs> so, so I mean, this is this is the thing, right? Like, um, we just have to. We just we have to. This is what, this is, seems to be one of the themes tonight. You know, we have to keep the tension. We have to keep the balance as much as we can, and. And I think for a lot of us, um, you know, we're coming to a time where um, we need to do the work to prepare ourselves because when it's when it's taken from us, when that access is cut off, you know, like 
you're not going to want to be pining for it. You don't want to be jonesing for that. You want to be able to be like, all right, I can let it go. Cause that that's, that's like a real thing, you know, because, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring it up with the, all the stuff, all the things that have been implemented by every nation. Right. And, and that's why, that's why we can't ever get like, you know, getting like the Russia Ukraine thing, right? I mean, don't get me, there's so many layers and levels to that, but like, however you want to cut it, I'll just put it to you this way. There's agents and there's agents everywhere now. There's, there's operatives, like, cause we're not, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, right? Mm -hmm. But they're, but their agents, their avatars, right, are everywhere. They exist in the quote unquote organization of the church. They exist in whatever government, whatever, whether you think that Russia is the good guy, which, you know, in comparison, sure. You know what I mean? But like every nation rolled out the measures. We all know the yep. measures we're talking about, the, ni the, yep. the 19 measures, right? Yep. And those measures haven't gone away. Those measures were just as much about cementing the integration of that technology right mm -hmm. in in our sphere of meaning right not just the practical aspect of it but but our under the meat like we have attributed to it a level of meaning now yes yes right that's yes. dangerous right and so that's why the the step up or or down depending on like deeper or more inward i don't look at it in regards of passes and you know um greater personal identity you know identification like everything that is that is already put into place now with this technology it isn't just the material aspect of it it's taken another step there is there is now a very much so spiritual component to the technology now mm -hmm. you can't you, you can't deny it you can't deny it and those who do deny it are for it like yes the tension for me and for my people if you're you know if, if you hear me i guess you are my people right if you're listening to this right the tension is like those of us who can get away with getting rid of it god bless you get rid of it those of us who have it, we need to keep attention of like, if it's taken from us, we're okay with it. That's that's where things are at right now because people have forgotten. It's so crazy to me. It seems so far, so far away, so long ago, everything was falling apart. And we were like, what's happening? And people have forgotten. Yes, people, are going, people are going to sleep again and all these things can just be activated literally and metaphorically just like that. I mean, yeah, people are like, uh, myself included. I mean, I find myself getting lax and not that I at all care, like, but the, the joke now is just like, well, people care more about like the Johnny Depp, Amber Heard trial. It's like mm -hmm. all that COVID stuff seems like forever ago. It's like, Oh yeah, there could be possibly a surge this winter. You know, stuff like and that could, could be, be possibly yo flu season is every year, but well, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I mean, it's it's on its way, it's roaring back. You know, it's every time I think back. It's, every time I think it's dead, and I think that th there's no small coincidence. Every time I think it's like okay, cool, I'm glad that I I got as I'm glad I woke up to the degree that mm -hmm. I did. I'm glad that uh, I drew a line in the sand and said this far no further. But I might have been wrong about this. I, you know, I just want to say this real quick because I, I need to say this because hopefully people will actually hear me. Um, one of the things that grieves me right now, um, and those who those who get to see me in the flesh, you might pick up on something with me lately. You know, I'm a human, and so uh, I have a tendency. No, I'm a human. <laughs> you know, I, I'm I'm fallible. Um, and so I can, um, I can get irritated and I can, you know, my patients can wear it thin. It's been a bit thin because, and it's not just the sense, but it's like, um, you know, in 20 and, and getting into like 21, 
so difficult, so tough, but man, things were so good mm. because people weren't petty. People, you know what I mean? And like pettiness is back in a lot of ways. And just like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, it's just for everybody, you know, you can hear me just knock it off, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, you know, code word, safe word, 2020. You know, if I start throwing, being like, hey, 2020, that's basically me saying to you, like, knock it off. You're being petty. Like, le- you weren't caring about this when you couldn't go to church. You weren't caring about this when you didn't know whether, like, you were going to die or someone was going to die. Like, you didn't care. You know what I mean? You were on top of things. And so for me, let's just be clear. Like, I'm not trying to be like, I'm above all that and I'm smarter. It's just, I'm responsible. So it's in my face all the time, but I'm like, yeah. I haven't forgotten. I, my, my whole MO is because I haven't forgotten. I can't forget, right? And I'm glad for it. I, I, I pray and hope all my spiritual children kind of hear what I'm saying. Like, we don't have to devolve into pettiness again. We don't have yeah. to. You know, I'm not saying we need to be in some kind of heightened state of just always being scared. And No, nah, that's not what I'm saying. But like, we, God gave us a gift in 2020 for a, for a year and some change. We were able to really take the kingdom of God serious again and just be at peace. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives it to I give you, right? We had the peace of the Lord because all the baloney we saw right through it. And we knew what, we knew what really mattered. We can forget that. Yeah, and I dare say we are we are a little bit, and we're we're getting lulled back to sleep. And I just I don't I don't want us. To, and to just kind of close it out, um, the Holy Spirit will help us, but we have to do what it takes to to not grieve Him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of what I was saying. It's like every time I I start to think like because I don't want to get lulled back because I know things are different for me now. And I, and I too am thankful for 2020. I think 2020 was probably one of the best things that happened to my faith without a doubt. Um, certainly woke me out of my, or <laughs> woke me out of my wokeness, uh, jumped, jumped me out of my wokeness, um, which is, you know, fantastic um, because I can think again. Um, but uh, th- every time I, I start to think it's going away, I'm like, I'm like, I'm really glad that we took the steps that we took because it's, uh, you know, it comes in waves and it'll go away. And I'm really glad. And I, I'm really glad that we drew the line in the sand, but I might, we might've been wrong about this one. You know, it might've been, you know, this is just thoughts and then something will happen. Like, and it's just like, you know, I'm, my attention is directed somewhere and I'm like, no, no. I mean, Fauci's still like, guys, come on, come on guys. Let's, let's, let's get back to 2020. Those were such good times for me. Like, let's get back there. Like, and I'm like, you know, so anyway, the point is, is, you know, still probably going to watch a little bit of TV, but I, I, I'm like, you know, I'm still don't want to go back at all to the way things were in 2019. So. Yeah. And all we have to do honestly is just, Pray to the Holy Spirit to help us have discernment. Just let's start here. Pray the Holy Spirit to give us discernment on when we're being petty. Like mm-hmm. if we all began to really like, this is not, I'm not talking about some heightened state. Just ask the Holy Spirit, help me to tell when I'm being petty. Mm-hmm. How, how, how you, you know what our households would be, would, would be like if we just, not even like all the time, but just dialed it back 10% yeah. of the pettiness, 20% of the pettiness. You know what I mean? Hmm. There's just a- like, if we could start there and I'm not trying to be like that. Come on guys. Like take the father turbo challenge. I'm just saying like, <laughs> this isn't a Ted talk or a turbo. You know what I mean? Like, but I'm just, I'm being real. I'm being real honest because it's like, you know, people want to get deep and they want to have this and that, but it's like, if you want to have a good confession, like stand in front of your icon corner and just be honest and be like, I'm petty. Mm -hmm. I'm vain. I'm petty. I'm superficial. If you just start there, man, I'm just, I am telling you from experience, 
you'll be surprised. You'll be shocked, actually. You'll be like, whoa, because the things that the spirit will be able to say to you, right? But you have to start there. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, two top reasons why people are either depressed or anxious. Do you know why? Mm. They're being no. petty. Oh. They're being petty. It's telling you. There's a part in The Walking Dead, the comic, not the show. Maybe it's in the show. The show, I didn't stop watching the show a long time ago, but in the comic where they, the survivors managed to make it into like a town with electricity and stuff like that. And everyone there, you know, Rick and Michonne are just, oh my gosh, there's lights. Are you kidding me? This is incredible. And the lady is like cutting their hair and she's like, yeah, but they have to shut them off, you know, like three times a week or something like that because we don't have that much power. And Rick's like, no, it's absolutely incredible that we have lights in the first place. This is absolutely incredible. I give it two weeks. You'll start complaining about it. I give it two weeks. And then you'll start complaining that you don't have power those three days. Again. Mm. And it's just like, man, that stuck with me since I read that, you know, 15 years ago or whatever. Cause it was like, that's mm. so true. Cause here they are, you know, and the absolute worst apocalypse, blah, blah, blah. Make it to like a place that has like a semblance, like a semblance of normalcy. And then they're like, no, we'll never complain about this. We'll never, ever stop loving this. And like, I give it two weeks until you start complaining. And wasn't it Prisma Cosmos who was talking about, um, we don't do, like, we need pain. Like, we don't do well. For whatever reason, we don't learn well. Like, we, we need pain. Um, like, comfort is, uh, I think I read uh, something, a quote from Blessed Sarah from Rose the other day that was about comfort, how, how comfort is a, uh, is just is comfort is destructive or so, something to that yeah. effect yeah i mean whatever reason we don't learn well like father james father james, I, cool, father james father james cool my baptizing priest used to always say like he gave us the garden he gave us the chocolates he gave us everything and we don't do so well with that yeah we that's don't what do it well is. in that that's, that's, yeah. that's what we don't do yeah. well with that yeah. and that was like instantly like the first time I this, oh, that's why we have suffer. Okay, cool. I got it. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So okay. wrapping it up. Uh, uh, what have you guys been listening to music, music wise? Mm -hmm. I've been listening to um, a ton of Ghost Club. Uh, and what is it? Ghost Club. Oh. That's sweet metal. <laughs> that orthodox metal. Oh, thing. yeah, that stuff that, yeah, that is yeah. actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah they're I've pretty been good. To, I've been listening to a ton of that. Um, and um, uh, Mike Schmidt from um, Yob, he has this like acoustic album <clears throat> that he did. I've been listening to that a little bit lately. And um, other than that, I mean that's that's about it in regards to you know I'm I'm usually listening more to talks these days and and of yeah. course you know chant and stuff like that. But music's more of a nighttime activity for me. Yeah, yeah. Father, have you heard of Hilda Diapon? Mm -mm. That's a yeah. great name, though. Yeah, uh, they're unblack or whatever. They were mm -hmm. big at Cornerstone um but i pray for those dudes i think that they're approaching orthodoxy they're one of those few christian bands who made it through their middle or their 20s still christian mm -hmm. like there's and they're still christian and uh i was talking with a brother from the church who we were talking about how we were getting kind of i i've i've never really super been into them but those guys have just been they were around an area i lived in for a while they're kind of a big part of that metal scene um, and I was talking with a brother from the church and he was looking at their Facebook or something and they made some posts about the books I'm reading this weekend. And one of them was the Orthodox study Bible. And then I think one of them was like the writings of a, a saint, you know? So I think, and like their lyrics are, they're on black metal. So it's all epic battles and, you know, like Tolkien, like, yeah, they're really good though. I mean, there's, they have an album called Holy Despair. So, um, yeah or holy darkness maybe holy darkness or something like that i can't remember anyway what about you cyprian i uh so i have this thing that happens to me every once in a while coming from like uh like my 
dance music DJ background where I'm constantly like, what is the, and I've been very good at this, like predicting what is going to be the next big music. Like I've done it a few times where it's just like two or three years beforehand. I'm like, this is going to be the sound of pop music. Like I'll hear something, something will, will pop into my, and I'll be like, Ooh, what is that? This will be the sound. And so I get like obsessed and like my, my, cause my brain will tear it apart. That's just the old like DJ producer brain that it's hard for me even to listen to electronic music without tearing it apart. So I have to listen to like actual people playing instruments in order to enjoy music usually. Yeah, Cause sure. if I listen to electronic music, my producer brain just breaks it apart. I can literally see like the MIDI laid across sure. the screen. It's terrible. It's horrible. But um, it's very interesting because I've just been stuck and now my wife is like listening to it nonstop down at the beach and stuff and dancing around. She, they, they, they go down and all the Russians dance in on the, on the beach and everything. Father, father knows the group that I'm talking about, all the Russian women. <laughs> so, so, but there's, there's these two styles. I've been paying attention a lot to Africa, but there's these two like pop dance music styles. One, they're just calling it uh, Afro beats from Nigeria. And then there's one called Ama Piano this style from out of South Africa, but it's, I, I've noticed it and it's got all of the things and I don't know what it means like politically or any of these things, but I've been very good at predicting these and this sound is coming exclusively out of Africa. And so I think that like in the next five years, popular culture is going to be highly influenced by Africa, by young urban sub-Saharan Africa is going to be like one of the prime movers of culture because there's nothing like in the west pop music's done it's done it's settled on trap like it's settled on trap beats and it's yeah. like that's it everything is that trap that's it oh I, I called that too i called that in like 2013 i was telling people this drum pattern right here this is everything like you can't go further it's like the final it's reached its final stage in the west it's, it's like it's the cyprian. west can't go further than this it's cyprian it's yes. a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. No, it literally yeah. is a trap. Like it's a musical trap that it's like, ah, you do this and everybody loves it and then you're done. Right. Yeah. And that's why I think like Africa, it's good. There, some of the stuff that's going on with the drums is like, it could only come out of Africa. Mm -hmm. oh. Like you would no nobody, like it could pop music could only do the thing, these things with the drums in Africa because it's just so complex. Right. But it sounds very African. And so it's like, hmm, but it's being picked up globally. So, so unfortunately I've been, stuck like so I, I so i go on these rabbit holes and i'm like okay this one this one this one and i just and yeah and so my brain is like that i'm trying to hopefully i can break out of that in the next month but my wife just keeps banging the stuff in the car because she loves it sure so it's like and in the house so now i'm stuck ah. on it my brain. <laughs> <coughs> well that's it for me yeah father mentioned uh, a guy i've been really into a, a while and i won't get go on and on but uh uh we were talking and he mentioned Devin Townsend. I don't know if it's going to make it into the intro or not. So we talked about a little bit about him, but I've been, and I apologize for people who know me personally, but I've been sending everyone Devin Townsend stuff recently. Just like, dude, you got to check this out. You got to check this out. It's well, so send good. me some stuff. Send me Absolutely. Some stuff. No, I mean, yeah, that'll I help know. me break my, uh, break my thing that's happening with me with this music. I don't know if you're into metal he's not a screamer yeah, sure. dude really he's not Send he's not really into that anymore he's actually pretty incredible vocalist um he's really good at um he's got a very very good voice uh he's very he can do opera very very well like real like steady good vibrato like just like really like anyway anyway um his devin townsend project stuff is next level um, especially since he's sober, he's got, there's like a line, there's a, uh, I'll, and I'll, Hey, I'll, I'll end with this, but, um, there's a, for all those that don't know, um, there's a really, really influential band called Meshuga and Meshuga pretty much was the, uh, the forefathers or the creators of a, a subgenre of metal called gent metal, um, but they got pretty heavily ripped off for a while. Uh, they have a particular tone and particular sound, a particular, uh, you know, like they have particular time signatures. And there for a little while, everybody was doing exactly what Meshuggah was doing. And Devin Townsend is so honest about everything. He has like a whole part in one of his songs where he's talking about like, uh, we all have bands that influence us and we all rip off Meshuggah. 
And the whole song that he's playing right now is a rip off to Mashuga. It sounds like a Mashuga riff and everything. Um, then the last thing I'll plug from him is he has a side project called Casualties of Cool. Like I said, I don't know what's going to make it into the intro, but it's fantastic. Hey, they might, you know, if it doesn't, sorry, I'm repeating myself, but that's just what I've been listening to. So awesome. anyway, we will be back next week. God willing. Um, I think, yeah, I think we're still back on track. So mm -hmm. that's it. Okay. Christ is risen. Truly is risen. Is risen indeed. Uh, thanks for having, thanks for having a good night. <laughs>